everybody, welcome back to Recordology. So where are we? We are down in Parker, Colorado today, and we're going to do this, the incline. As you can see, there's some people already working their way up and that'll be us shortly. And yeah, Parker's about 20 miles southeast of Denver. We come down here every once in a while, they got some cool stuff. Uh, this is one of them, this is called the incline. It's a few hundred steps to the top of a, of a little peak, a little mountain as it were. So enjoy this show. We're gonna hike this and we'll join you at the end of the show from the top. So we only need to go the rest of the way up. This is how much we've done so far. Not too impressive yet, but these are monstrous, dude. These are like 24 inch steps. They're huge. Welcome to Recordology. Hey guys. We got an interesting project for sure today. Just listening to a little Patsy Cline on my Danzet Junior and about to bite off a project that I've been nervous about. I've been planning this for weeks now and my wife is like you find you need to do this you need to just do it why am i nervous because i absolutely know not what i'm doing i am very much a novice i'm not even a enthusiast i'm just a novice when it comes to eight tracks i am very much a novice and amateur i know of them how they work what they look like inside how the mach how the technology functions their benefits their detractors you know all that stuff but i've never opened one and what we're going to do today is we're going to open one and service it and it is, you know, pretty common knowledge that every 8-track tape needs to have its foil splice replaced, lest it snap in the player and, you know, be sucked into eternity, and the uh, foam pads behind the tape need to be replaced because they get mashed up. Although this one, uh, pretty common with RCA tapes, uses a foil spring, tensioning spring with felt pads. Uh, those seem to last longer from what I can tell, but... Uh, I, I have some of those too, so we can look at how to do that and possibly repair that. What I'm most nervous about is getting the dang thing open. And I know different tapes are ma made differently. So like, you know, an RCA tape may be different than a Columbia or this Capital may be different than, you know, something else. There are nuances. The consensus that I've seen so far is that you need to sort of pry the tape open with like some sort of prying tool or I've seen it done with like a clothes pin. I have neither of those, so we're going to just kind of, I'm just gonna try and use my fingers to try and spread it open. Hopefully that'll work, whole Glenn Yarbrough there. Another thing we need is a splicing block, another thing I don't have, so I've made my own. I saw this YouTube video, it's drying right now, I put some black ink on there to try and make it look better. But basically you take a couple credit cards or plastic cards, and basically with a piece of quarter inch tape form your own splicing block something to stabilize and keep the tape straight while you you know put a new splice in place so we'll let that dry but i think that should do the trick i hope so for supplies i bought a kit on ebay and i know the best way to do it would be to buy um just like bulk supplies so if i'm if i if i do a decent job at this you know, I'll probably invest in more, but I didn't want to, you know, overly invest if I'm if I'm just going to suck at it right off the bat. So um, I know people will, you can get these fixed for like five bucks a piece. It would probably be a lot more cost effective to do it on your own. So I got a kit. It comes with instructions. It comes with a bunch of foam replacement foam for the type of tapes that take that. The only tape I have that has been serviced is this Carpenter's tape that Fartimart gave to me and uh, knowing him, of course, he's fully serviced it, so it's in, you know, A1 condition. So I've got a, a six of everything. I've got six replacement pads. I've got six foil splices. I've got enough felt to replace, you know, several of those. And the splices are literally just little adhesive pieces of foil and as we've talked about before this is quarter inch tape just like a reel-to-reel -reel. however it's got eight tracks so it's got the same track real estate as like a, as a compact cassette which is eighth inch tape so you don't get the full real estate of like a stereo reel-to-reel -reel. 
because they're cramming double the amount of tracks in there. Also, this rotates at uh, three and three quarters inches per second. Compact cassettes are, you know, one and seven eighths, half of that. Reel to reel machines, most of them can do different speeds. Uh, including three and three quarters, one and seven eighths, and seven and a half inches on consumer models. If you have a, you know, a professional deck, you can go up to 15 and 30 inches per second. That's way out of my league at this point. Okay, enough stalling. I'm gonna, I just need to do this. So I'm going to pick a tape that I don't mind losing, and because I may screw it up and break it. So it's as simple as that. I don't know what I'm doing. This is, you know. Settle back and relax and, you know, eat some popcorn as you watch an idiot possibly ruin an 8-track tape. I guess you'll have an idea of how this goes based on the title, but all right, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's take another look into the 8-track player. If you have a portable like my Panasonic portable TNT type player, it does not have the ability to switch tracks automatically because there's only like a 10 or 12 minute loop of tape in there. Just so to fit a whole album or two, you have to be able to uh, have multiple tracks going simultaneously or program. So an eight track tape has four stereo programs and the head moves up and down. By the way, I did solidify with glue that head shell, that plastic white head shell, so it will not break. Thanks for the tip on that. You can see the cap stand on the right, but what I really wanna focus on is this brass contact point right there. So on the left, you'll see that that is uh, basically a metal contact that when it hits that foil splice it makes contact and initiates a solenoid to switch tracks and that head again moves up and down so that's what the splice is for on a manual tape deck that you have to switch it manually it doesn't make a difference other than the fact that the weak point where the tape is looped on itself is right there on that splice so either way it needs to be replaced so it doesn't you know unspool okay so the first thing is and the part that I'm most nervous about is getting the dang thing open. Magnetone recordings. Obviously, this is a blank, home-recorded Neil Diamond. There are two types of people in this world, as we've said before. And this tape is now on the chopping block. So it does have some foam pads, which is good, so we can get experience replacing that. They are pretty mesh mashed down. I don't see any, I don't know if those are release tabs. They're not screw holes. They, they don't, they look like they have plastic in there. So I don't know if I'm supposed to poke that with something to, to get them loose, but we're just going in. So again, I don't have a spreader either. <laughs> I'm very well prepared. I'm just going, I feel like the right thing to do is to spread it like that. Cause everybody has said, this is what you have to do with either a clothespin or you know, a spreading tool. I don't have those things, so I'm just gonna yeet it with my fingers. And they also said to go fast and not slow, otherwise that's how you can break stuff. So here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> and one, two, three. Nothing. Let me try over here. One, two, three. There we go. Okay. So I also read this pretty common for it to catch back here. So what's with the label? Like, are you like pretty much just just gonna rip your label in half and you could, that's probably an easy way to tell if a tape has been serviced or can you maybe fold it over so that it like it's just laying there I'm not 100% sure so let's see all right there we go something just went flying so okay interesting so I can leave the tape like that interesting this is actually probably a good one to demonstrate because of the fact it's so colorful and light colored these tabs, look at this one's right here, that one's busted off. So yeah, and that one's busted off. So I was very much supposed to release the pressure on those tabs beforehand. So this one, that's a demonstration. I knew that was a possibility, so there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm familiar with you know the anatomy of an eight track. Essentially what you got is a quarter inch reel of tape and they're really designed to lay with in this position they can be you know positioned upside down but you want to keep them upright this one looks like it's been serviced because that punch out there i bet you what do you think yeah and the pad's in good condition because if you leave it like this and especially if you were to take it and like slam it up and down i've heard that the tape can come off the reel this one doesn't really have much of a spreader some of them have like a piece that kind of goes over the top obviously the, the lid will help a little bit so you have um, 
something kind of amazing. The technology still pretty much baffles me, but what you have here is a, a single loop of tape. This is one infinite loop, and it comes off the hub on the center around here on this roller across these pads, and this one is, is hose, so it definitely needs replacing. That looks like the easiest thing to do. And um, you know what I didn't do? Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. I didn't, I didn't get the foil splice in the right spot. <laughs> You're supposed to play it until you get the foil splice, until you hear it click over and then open it up. So idiot mistake number one has been achieved, okay? Okay. So um, then the head, you know, obviously presses right there. This, is, this opening right here is where the, uh, the switch is, you know. Pinch roller right here, it's cap stand drive. Cassettes are interesting of any kind, tapes. This is a nice rubber pinch roller. Uh, because the cassette itself is part of the mechanism. In, in, in reality, the cassette is part of the mechanism to play. It's got part of the hardware. It's not just media. Where a compact disc is just the media, a tape is part of the equipment. And that goes for compact cassettes and even more so with these, you know, cartridge type devices. So, okay, what are we going to do here? Um, not knowing for sure if I can get the shell back on now that I busted those tabs. We're just going to start with the easy thing, which is to replace this pad. As you can tell, this one is mashed and no longer bounces back. We're going to take a new pad. And it's got an adhesive back, I think. It's got an adhesive back. I need to trim my fingernails. Sorry about that. But it makes it good to do stuff like this. <laughs> so we're going to... Place it back in. Now, do I smash it down over this, or do I... I feel like I'm going to have to smash it down over that post. Right? Okay. Yeah. Clearly, I don't know what I'm doing. But then it's smashed down. See, that doesn't feel right. I feel like it should go over the top. All right, I'm going to read the instructions. Here. So what I've done with this is I've trimmed it, and then I've kind of split it. You notice how there's plastic on top of the pads. That's way, that's so that the uh, tape can slide over the pad easily. So should have enough to go on either side. This is not going to be the best example of this you'll ever see, I guarantee you. So how deep down do I go? Like I don't want to, I feel like it should be kind of near the top. Is that good? It's not too bad. So basically I trim the sides and I cut a split down there in the middle. All right, well, oh gosh, see what's happening over here? Bad things are happening. You need to be very, very careful what you're doing. Now, as the tape plays, it will kind of repack itself a little bit, but you need to be, you know, you could screw your life up. If this thing comes off the spool, then that's, that's a pay grade that I'm not anywhere near. So <laughs> you won't be seeing how to do that on this show, I guarantee you that. Uh, I need to get this back together so we can play it to the splice, and then we'll replace the splice. I will say this, the tape is actually packed in very nicely. Uh, as far as I can tell, there's not like a vertical piece that's in there too much. I'm guessing the splice, by the way, you can see this little gap. I'm guessing it's somewhere right around there. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad this one also has the rubber. I, the ones that are plastic, the RCAs with the plastic pinch rollers, that seems like a, I don't know how that works because that's a hard cap stand against a hard plastic pinch roller. And a tracks kind of janky to begin with, so it's not like, you know, who knows how firmly that tape is being held against the capstan. Sort of a mystery to me. Um, but yeah, so what I was going to say earlier is, now that it's kind of messed up, it's harder to see, but so it spools around the outside edge and then comes off the center of the hub and then as it's played, it goes back around the outside of the edge. From a physics standpoint, something that's happening during this process as the tape is playing and it's progressing itself to the center of the hub and, and coming back off of it, is the tape is sliding on itself. So 8-track tape uses a, a special substance on the back of the tape that allows it to kind of give it a little bit of lubrication on itself. And I don't know if it's a type of mylar or some kind of thing they add to it, but that, that's the way that is. So all quarter-inch tape isn't necessarily the same. By the way, from a formula perspective, this looks like fantastic tape. You'll see it's nice and dark. 
It's a very rich mixture. I still believe that lighter formulations, like in contrast, look how light this tape is. Those can sound good, but from my experience, the darker the tape mixture, the higher the quality. Okay, enough stalling again. Doing a lot of that today. I need to get this tape back into functioning order so that I can um, put it back together and play it to this place. So let me uh, give myself a little bit more breathing room with the camera and then we'll do that. And doing this while filming is, is a bit tricky, so um, if I go off camera or anything, let me know. I don't know how you're going to let me know. Don't let me know. Just think it and then hopefully I will. I apologize. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah, let me know. It's a conference call, right? All right, all right. Things are falling back into place. You need to go down there. You need to go over here. Another thing that makes me nervous about this is I am not good with tape. Like, this takes skills that I don't have. Another thing that I've learned too, and I'm sure you guys are going to educate me more, which is great because I don't know. Does this go on this side of this piece or does it go back here? Looks like there's some tape rubbed off there. I feel like it should go there. I feel like it should come off there. Um, but what I was going to say is, one thing I've learned too is that the tape can't be too tight. Because if the tape is too tight, then it can cause problems. And you don't want that to happen. So, All right, I'm going to fiddle with this a little bit more. Try to close the shell. And hopefully we can play it to this place. Okay, I think we're in business here. So as I rotate it, you can see how it moves, how it works. I think those foam pads are good. And I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be completely tight now because I ruined things with um, the way I opened it. So hopefully that doesn't set a tone for the, how the rest of the video is going to go. But making sure the tape is on the inside of the shell. Did I get it in there okay? That foam pad is not the best execution of that ever done, I guarantee you. All right, well. Actually, it snapped. Wow, it snapped pretty tight. Oh, see, that's not so tight. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. It's usable. It's definitely usable. <laughs> so now we've learned a lesson, kids, that you should actually relieve pressure on those tabs. So I need to get something to stick in there to do that. But now we need to play it to the splice. All right. Well, that feels really wrong. Oh, it's the label. I thought I heard something cracking. <laughs> Such an ungraceful thing. So we are just going to let it play. I don't have any speakers hooked up, but you don't need it because I'll hear that, that solenoid click. All right. Don't see it, but apparently it's close. So hopefully we can get to it. If you don't enjoy tactile experiences with your hands, I could see how the experience of 8-tracks would just force you further down the path of digital. At this point, guys, yeah, it's right off again. Was it that one? Well, now all of them are busted, so that takes care of that. <laughs> so basically, there's like a little lip there. So I bet the plastic came over the top and caught on the lip. So basically push that back a little bit. Interesting. All right, where's our splice? See, there's our splice. Now, everybody is like, you cannot, there's one of these pieces, by the way, it came off. Everybody's like, you cannot have eight tracks without doing this. It's, you know, required and all this stuff. I've never had one of these actually come apart on me, like actually have the need to do this per se. Try to keep my hand on this to keep it packed while I unspool this. But I don't listen to a lot of 8-track tapes either. I mean, I listen to some. I've got some treasures, but I'm starting to build up my collection. So there it is. I mean, it's literally... See, it's spliced at an angle there. You can see it. That's a perfect splice. It'll never look that good again. And it feels good. I mean, that's a quality splice, I guess. We're still going to replace it just for the experience, but yeah, this tape overall just looks like it's in good condition. 
So, um, yeah, I'm just going to cut. <laughs> One of the things people don't like about uh, eight tracks is the fact that the um, songs have a tendency to be, oh yeah, this is another thing I learned is, see how there's a little bit of glue there on the actual tape? So I learned that you should cut a ways back and not to worry because there's nothing, there's no important media that is that close to the splice. Either song faded out, which is what I was going to say is one of the reasons why people don't like eight tracks, or it literally is just some blank space there if they timed it out that right that way. Okay, so trying to keep that back together up there, we're going to bring in our splice block and make sure we get it the right side up. See, the kind of mistakes that I make on stuff are stupid stuff, like we just did with opening the tape. So, like, I would see myself, like, splicing the tape, like, the wrong way. <laughs> but the essence of what we want to do here is to get the tape into the channel that we have created with this block. And I may need to pull some more tape out in order to do that. Okay, so I'm using a couple of my 45 adapters. This is an interesting thing. So you learn by doing, right? I would make the splice block a lot bigger so that I could fit those on there and still have room to work in the middle. As it is, I have to kind of put them off to the side, which creates that sort of um, effect where they're kind of coming up and arching back down. So it's not ideal. Also, my channel dimensions are off. I've got my foil splice right here, and it's not bent like it looks. The adhesive is on the bottom, and I am going to position it on there and smooth it out with my fingers. And as you can tell, it looks a lot worse than the original one did. Look at that. That is like a lot narrower than the tape. I don't know. Is that going to be enough for it to, to do its thing? And the tape is flush. It's not overlapping. I'm going to smooth that out as good as I can. Again, learning experience, you guys. Hopefully that's sufficient. I don't feel like it's hanging off the edge, which would be a bigger problem. So let me repack this tape. And we'll, I don't know if we, we'll have to play it through the whole time again to see if it actually works, but that should be it. Another thing too is you'll notice that I didn't put anything on the back. There's no backing adhesive. I just put it, the, the splice itself is the only thing. All right, so we should be able to turn this. Interesting. What an amazing technology, seriously. The fact that that works it just blows my mind, you guys. What an amazing, amazing technology. All right, well, I'm going to have to put some shipping tape or something to hold that firm now because I busted those three tabs. So lesson learned. We learned that one together. I'm, you guys knew that already. You guys knew that. You were just watching me screw that up. But I want to test the integrity of that splice. All right. We finally made it to the end, and the tape is still holding together. There's a splice, by the way. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I think it was better before I messed with it, but it's it's holding firm. Okay, guys, and that is going to do it. We made it to the top. It was brutal, but uh, it's only 68 degrees out, which is pretty much perfect for this, but you still get really hot. Um, you know, working up a sweat, and it's a beautiful view from up here on this side. This is looking east. You can see the town of Parker in the distance, and there's a big reservoir they have over there. And then behind me, I'll show you a better shot in a second, is the mountains. So I hope you enjoyed this show. There is Denver, about 20 miles away. A little bit of smog on the horizon. And the Front Range, Colorado Mountains, absolutely beautiful, beautiful day. Hey guys, and that is going to do it for today. Thank you so much for being here. God bless each and every one of you. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.